Why, hello there. I hope somebody asked me what my favorite type of tea is. Because that's a really good question. Passion. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Coach Michelle Hong. Today I am doing a Q&A and I asked everybody on Instagram in my Instagram stories to see what type of questions you want answers to. So I'm gonna pop up all the usernames who've participated in today's questions and I will be happy to answer some more and keep this going as a series because I know a lot of people have been commenting on all my posts and YouTube channel comments that I haven't gotten the chance to connect with. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe to know more about figure skating, about me and my students, and the whole skating journey in itself. Love you all so much, and let's get into it. What is your favorite jump? So my favorite jump, I personally love toe jumps, and my favorite one is toe loop. So double toe, triple toes were my ultimate favorite. It's a hard one to master, and I used to have a toe axle actually. My toe loop was great, but my double was really hard for me to get down. I was really cheated in the beginning, and then at the same time, I kind of did like a toe axle because it was hard for me to get around. But once you get the idea of keeping your body forward and your left arm checked in front, then you're thinking about that your body is staying in this one place as opposed to turning your whole entire body then jumping. So toe loop is my ultimate favorite. Once you get the hang of it, you can launch yourself up into the air like boom. And Nikki Catatolico was the one that asked, when did you start skating and coaching? So I started skating around the age of seven. That's when things got more serious. And I started skating because my sister actually got hooked to it after we went to our friend Jacqueline's birthday party. It's so cute, like I have a picture of myself for the first time skating and I have my helmet on, my elbow pads, my knee pads. I look like I was so scared. I was hanging onto the wall with my rental skates on. And that was when I was like five, six years old and I was a nervous wreck. I was trying to be prepared for injury and like my parents were trying to protect me too, but I wasn't hooked right away like my sister was. My sister was uh, super talented. She learned by watching. She had rental skates on and then she saw people doing sit spins and she would do sit spins too. So shout out to Melissa who begged my parents for private lessons and for classes and all that stuff. And then my parents, they finally, were persuaded to put her in classes and then I was at the prime age of starting so they also put me into classes as well and that's how it all began. I slowly grew a love for it. It wasn't like a love at first sight, like I love this sport. It was more so like, let me follow what my sister does because she's so awesome. And then also shout out to my oldest sister, Pamela, for being super talented as well. She's a tennis player, but she always took care of us at the rink because my parents had to work. Oh, and the second part to that question is, when did I start coaching? So I actually started coaching when I was 16 years old. I started when I was in high school doing like group classes, and before that I would actually be volunteering doing classes, so I got the hang of like working with kids and what it's like to actually start from the ground up when you're starting to teach, because I think when you are a figure skater, you kind of think about like, if I were to be a coach, I wanna coach advanced kids, but you have to really start from the ground up. If you don't know how to teach the basics of skating, it's really hard to you, for you to break down the more difficult aspects of the sport. So I'm so glad that I started out teaching tiny tots, beginner classes, because that really helped enforce the foundation of how figure skating all works. That drove me to be able to learn how to teach all the more difficult parts of figure skating in a more in-depth way. I started full-time coaching one or two years after college. I actually was working at a biotech startup after I graduated from UC Berkeley and I was miserable. Like that's the thing that you're supposed to do. Like you're supposed to work in the city when you get out of college and you have this life that, you know, people pay for you or you think that that's what makes you successful, but in my eyes, my heart wasn't in it, and I still was coaching at the time, like early in the morning, or making time for it when I was still working. But I knew in my heart that coaching and making a difference in all my skaters' lives is what I was meant to do. And with my youth and my different background in figure skating, which emotions and the mental health of the sport is super important. I train my students to be a well-rounded, 
holistic skater, not just the athletic part of it. I want them to be happy. I want them to be healthy. I want them to eat well. I want them to be confident in themselves. I want them to be strong athletes on the ground, on the ice, good in school. And when you build like a holistic, strong, well-rounded athlete, then it just portrays not just in the sport, it will just transcend into more opportunities for them to develop into professional skaters, go to college and still skate and be on the team and use their life lessons to transfer to real life jobs, real life internships, real life leadership opportunities. So that's how I got started coaching and that's how I started skating. And so yeah, Leticia Kelsky asked, what would you probably do if you didn't start skating? So that's a really interesting question because I really am not that good at any other land sport. Swimming is not my forte. I don't play any instruments. I think I would love to be a hip hop dancer. I would love to take up dance. And even to this day, like I've been itching. I was like, oh, I want to take a hip hop class. So I finally found one in my area and it's just so fun. And I feel like that really brings out the artistic and the creative side of my personality. So I would definitely be a dancer. Pari Roddy asks, any tips on landing double sow and axle? I'm so close to landing it. So if you're so close to landing it, honestly, that means you're either breaking at your waist, you're probably dropping your left shoulder. So I would practice a lot of off ice technique and also the foundation, the setup of jump. Um, I think a lot of people just attack it. Like, let me go fly into my jump and I'm gonna land it that way. But actually it's the foundation that really drives how you're gonna be able to succeed in the jump. So keeping your right arms on your right side and your left hip up is super important and doing a lot of off ice exercise. I will link the how to do the axle video where I demonstrate a lot of exercises that will help solidify the foundation of the axle up above and down below in the description box. In addition to that, I will try to make more off ice videos. I haven't really done that on my channel yet, but I know that a lot of people have been asking for it, so I will totally do that for you. That awkward Eddie. Okay, ask, what age group do you enjoy teaching the most? So this is actually a very interesting question. I never really thought about like, oh, which one do I enjoy the most? Cause I enjoy working with all my skaters. I'm kind of selective in that way. I do a trial lesson with my student first. If they're interested in taking classes and lessons with me, I try to see if it's a good fit personality wise because my teaching style is very direct. I want a lot for my skaters, no matter what your goals are. If you're just doing skating once a week, if you're competing as an adult, if you're competing as a competitive athlete who wants to make it to nationals, if you are just starting out, if you are interested in doing shows, I see that there is a goal and I wanna help you achieve that goal. And so you have to put in the work to achieve that goal. So if you're not in the mindset to follow the steps necessary to making those goals happen, then that wouldn't be a good fit for me. Age group wise, it depends on every week. You know, sometimes my teenagers are giving me a headache. They have a lot of emotional problems. It's hard for them to overcome them and I'm always there to be the one that supports them, but it's emotionally exhausting for me as well. But I still enjoy working with them no matter what. Just some weeks are a little bit tougher. My adult skaters, I would say, are the most appreciative because they've grown to that maturity level. They know how this is such a gift. Skating is such a gift for them to be able to do something that they're passionate about and love on a day-to-day -day basis, whereas with kids, they're not really emotionally inept to express those emotions quite yet. They're kind of, you know, exploring their way of feeling and how they consider themselves in the world. So it varies on a day-to-day -day basis, a week-to-week -week basis, but I love working with all my skaters. If I didn't like working with them, then there would actually be a conversation to be had where I would recommend a different coach that would work and fit well with their needs. If I won't be able to give 110% to my skater, then they're not gonna benefit 110% and I would never treat them in that way. I want them to have the best and I want them to have a coach that will be there with them 110% and that'll be a good fit. Thank you for that question. Sakara underscore brew asks, how do you get such high spirals? So I was not naturally flexible even though a lot of people from all across the world, they see like my spirals, they see my videos, and they're like, 
this girl must be naturally flexible. Heck no. Let me try to find a picture of me when I was younger. This was my spiral. <laughs> and I stretched and stretched and stretched. And I also did this cross training called sport aerobics. It's a cross between rhythmic gymnastics and regular gymnastics. And it was super fun because it was a team sport. We strengthened a lot of our muscles, but we did a ton of flexibility. Like I would be sitting in the middle splits with my legs spread apart like this, and my coach would sit on me. My sport aerobics coach would sit on me, and like there would be tears coming down my eyes, but I like, I was like, I wanna be flexible, I wanna be flexible. <laughs> so that, and then we also did over splits where you have those big giant blue mats. And then I would put my heel on top of that blue mat and I would do the splits and I would hold it for two minutes. So I will probably do like how to get my spirals higher video. That's a really good idea. Thank you, Sakara, for asking that. I ultimately, I worked, I worked, I worked on it. I would put ankle weights on my ankles and I would lift my leg up on the ground. And I would even put ankle weights on the ice. Like while I was skating, I would put ankle weights on the ice. So I'd have my boot weight and I would have the ankle weight and I would practice doing the spirals. And once I took the ankle weight off, of course my foot felt like so free and so high. So those are some tips that I would say on getting higher spirals. But the ultimate key, there's no overnight sensation. I really, really honed in on it when I was younger because I really wanted a beautiful spiral. So yes, it is possible to get. How do you overcome popping jumps? Okay. So that is from Alexa Est. Thank you for asking. Popping jumps, it really stems from your confidence. If you're not confident in what you're doing and you're, if you're scared or you're holding back, the first step I would say is you need to get butt pads. Get some butt pads because if you're scared of getting hurt, then protect yourself. Find a way to make you feel as though like nothing's gonna go wrong. So if you've been hurting your elbow and you got a big bruise there, you got booty pad that you could wear, you could have elbow pads, you could have knee pads. So if you feel like that is an uh, internal fear of yours, then start from there. And then if that doesn't work, then you really have to go back to the basics. So you need to go to, instead of doing a double or a triple, go back to the single, go back to the setup. Some of my students struggle with circling and I kind of do a little game with them like, okay, if you circle or you pop on this next one, I'm gonna take your cow away. <laughs> so my student Cyrus, he has this um, sow cow and it's like a stress ball that he got at a competition. And he keeps it in his bag as a good luck charm. So I said, I'm gonna hold him hostage if you don't do this next jump. And he, that really excites him and it gets him going. He's like, I need to do it for the cow. I need to do it for the cow. So sometimes you have to just make it a game. It stems from your mental, your mental confidence. And sometimes if you just think about like removing your brain from the situation, removing your emotion from the situation, then that's how you could overcome your jumps because what ends up happening is that you fall and then you get back right up. You're a skater, you've done this so many times before. So being able to just overcome those types of fears is important. Popping will just decrease your score. It will increase your lack of confidence. It just makes you really frustrated. So I would say just Think about pulling in, squeezing your ankles, and executing. Or if you fall, then you could just fix your mistake. Okay? Jesse J. U. asks, how can I get more height in my jumps? Number one answer is off ice, off ice, off ice. Check to see if you're getting a lot of height on your off ice jumps. I used to wear ankle weights on my ankles, not just for the spiral stretching, but also for jumps. I I would reach for the sky, I would reach for the ceiling, I would pull my arms in with my ankle weights on and I would try to get more height pushing off the toe. You have to have strong ankle muscles. In addition to that, you have to have strong calves. So doing heel lifts, heel raises to get strength in your ankles and your calves is really important. In addition to that, I would say stepping onto a bench, jumping onto that bench and lifting my knee up is highly important for all of that good stuff to get you to jump and climb onto the bench is similar to how you're gonna get high onto the axle. I like to tell my students that you don't want to be third place, you don't wanna be second place. You wanna be on the first place podium and that's the highest point on the podium. So think about that as you're climbing up to your axle, climbing up to your double axle, okay? The next question comes from Sonia underscore one, two, one, seven. What is your skating story? 
So my skating story, as I told you before, started out with my sister and she was the one that sparked my interest in skating. And I really got into the sport more competitively at nine and that's when I loved competitions. It was just so fun putting myself out there and reaching out for the audience and telling a story. I loved all the creative stuff. I did a lot of artistic competitions in addition to technical competitions and I did that throughout my whole entire skating career from when I was little all the way until my senior year. And I think that was super important for me because it helped me build my confidence. A lot of technical competitions, what happens is that everybody focuses so much on the jumps and the artistry is taken away from the sport. So I think that was most my most memorable moment of skating was when I was the one that chose to continue to do artistic in addition to technical and not a lot of skaters did that. My parents encouraged me a lot because they saw that I loved the sport so much and they didn't want me to be super stressed out on a constant basis like over my jumps. They wanted me to still be able to tell a story and be artistic and my creative side was able to always shine through. Another interesting fact is that my sister choreographed my programs starting when I was like juvenile. She would do a lot of my artistic competition programs and my senior year I think she choreographed two of my programs and I love being able to work with her on those things because her and I have a really good creative connection and she has choreographed my students programs as well but now she lives in San Diego so unfortunately she doesn't get the chance to work with me as much but thanks to Melissa she has encouraged me so much to jump outside of my comfort zone believe in myself and now I get to choreograph my students programs and I get to uh, share my love for the sport the way that she has shared her love for the sport to me. And then I also skated in college and I have a few questions regarding how to keep skating in college so I'll get to that later on. KeyBladeKing.13 What is your preferred method for making a skating program? So this is awesome because I love choreographing. Choreographing is one of my favorite parts of my job and um, it starts out with having my student pick their music. So a lot of coaches nowadays, I think they're the ones that choose the music for the skater. However, for myself, I want my students to create a list. Give me a list of 10 of your favorite songs that you're interested in and they could do it with their parent as well and they give me a list of the YouTube links that they're interested in because if you also see the video that comes with it, that could inspire me to develop some type of creative choreography for my skater. So my preferred method starts with that and once they give me their list of 10 songs, then I select my favorite one. It could be used for their short, their long, their artistic competitions and so on and so forth. And once I have the music, I listen to it a couple times, but my main work happens on the ice. Think about like what elements I want in sequential order. So I think about those elements and then I start choreographing on the ice. So once I play the music on the stereo, I get a better feel for it, then I just choreograph spot on. And then I teach my students the section of the program, and then that's how I start developing their whole skeleton. And I tend to give an outline of what the program looks like, and then I add more arms later on, so then they could have something to practice and start developing their timing for their jumps, their spins, their footwork, and all that great stuff. So yeah. April wins asks, how can I keep skating in college? So that's an excellent question and that was something that I was trying to say that I was gonna get to, so perfect timing. Um, I started skating in college my freshman year and I actually did not like it. It was one of those things where I felt like my skating journey had been over already. I didn't want to skate anymore. That was when I was trying to compete. So my freshman year at UC Berkeley, I was still trying to do regionals, but at that time it was just too stressful. I was falling asleep in my classes and I felt as though that I wasn't getting any better. I was just not doing well in school. In addition to that, I wasn't going to be able to keep up with my skating. So I knew that I needed to focus on my academics. I felt it in my heart and in my gut that my skating time had been long overdue in a way because I put so much time and energy into the sport and now I really want to just take a break. It was one of those things that I was kind of burnt out and I really loved it. but the will to keep going when your heart is not fully in it at that moment is really difficult. So I had to just let it go and focus on academics and that was when my journey to discovering myself began because it was difficult to find my identity outside of skating. 
and you could read a lot about that on my website but I will probably make a separate video on my journey transitioning from high school to college and from no longer competing to collegiate figure skating. It wasn't a smooth transition, it wasn't a happy pleasant transition. Life is not always happy. It was an important time for me to realize that skating should not just be about me. I wanted to join the Cal Figure Skating team because I wanted to do it for a team. I wanted to be um, a strong member of something that could be great and it was awesome because the team grew from the five members, I think it was five to six members it was my freshman year, to the 30 plus amount of people it grew into my senior year and that was really awesome for me to be a part of even though I wasn't skating the way that I wanted to skate and my body wasn't in the shape I wanted it to be. It wasn't about me anymore, it was more about how I'm going to make other people happy through my outlet of my passion of figure skating. So it is very possible to skate in college. You can find um, if your school has a team and if they don't have a team then you could look up the different links on how to start a U.S. figure skating college team and you could compete at collegiate competitions and you 100% can compete at the collegiate championships. The intercollegiate championships is the one where you do competitions against other schools. So if your school is too small, I'm not sure if you're able to do that, you kind of have to look it up. I will try to find the links to help you guys down below. If not, I'll make a whole separate video on how to start a figure skating team in college. My last question of the day is from JM Wafer, or Wafer. Have you thought about doing adult competitions? I love watching you skate. So a lot of people have asked me ever since um, I think I finished school and whenever I'm like practicing on the ice, whenever I have free time myself right now, have you ever thought about doing shows? Have you ever thought about doing adult competitions? I don't necessarily find it in my heart to want to, you know, perform for judges or I kind of like to do skating for myself and I love being able to share it with you all online, but yeah, so competitions are not really my thing. I think that's that's a, a thing of the past, but I do love to perform. So I hope that, you know, videos on here are enough. But this is what I love to do. I love to be able to share it with the world and be able to share it with those who are passionate about figure skating or want to get into figure skating. So I hope that all these questions helped. I hope that this gave you some inspiration, some good advice for your future journey in the sport. Let me know in the comment section below what advice I gave that resonated with you the most. And I'm so happy to have you all here on my YouTube channel. Let me know what you wanna see next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.